Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church, HRC Law Class. I'm your brother, Kasafo. And I'm your brother, Zakwa. Hope you all are enjoying the day and hope you've been enjoying the edification. Now that we have understanding of the law on unlawful images, today we'll discuss some more everyday edification for us in the world regarding to that law. Can you read Numbers 33 and 52, please? Yes. Yeah. Then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places. The definition of pictures here is H4906. It's from an unused root meaning to shade. A phantom, that is, figuratively, illusion. Resemblance, hence, a representative figure, especially an idol. Image, vain, show. Here, by the definition of an image, or pictures, as we see the word is described in scripture, we are shown that an unlawful image has to be fashioned in detail and or shaded in order to resemble a creature or person while an outline alone is not unlawful. Hence, with this understanding, the Hebrew alphabet wasn't against the law, as it's just the outline of creatures and people without the detail or shading in of the images. Through these, the Hebrew language and the law, we can understand the difference of unlawful and lawful images is based on fashioning the outline with detail or shading in the image. Let's look at the Hebrew alphabet to understand that. Zachor, can you pull up the Hebrew alphabet, please? Yes, it should be up. It is. As you all see, you can see a better definition on the what I think is the right side of your screen. It may be the other side. I'm not sure. What side is that? It may be your left side of your screen. I don't know. But you can see more definition of the Hebrew writing here. From the image of the Hebrew letters that are represented by body parts of creatures and people, but they aren't fashioned in detail. For example, you have the letter A. Zachwa, can you put your cursor on A? Oh, you don't. I don't have a cursor. Yeah. <laughs> the letter A is the first thing at the top. Ooh. And it looks like the right hand corner. It looks like an ox head. It is the outline of an ox head. And then the letter R is the outline of a man's head. There are about two R's that you can see there. And then the letter I is the outline of an eye. It's in the other top, top far corner. It's a little then, hard to see, but it's up there. You can see okay. it. <laughs> and then you have the SH letter, which is two front teeth. And it's right next to that hard to see looking eye there. Now, if you look at the letter R for the man's head, you can see a little dash to let you know it's a man head. That's like his hairline in the R to indicate that it's a man head. But notice it's not fashioned in detail. As well, if you look at the I, which is just a circle of an eye, and the A, which is the outline of an ox head, they're all outlines without um, very much detail. Or with, shade in there. Thank you. So with the definition of the word for pictures, understanding this is shading or something being done in detail and seeing the Hebrew alphabet, which was lawful because that's what we wrote in, it helps understand that the outline of a creature or person is lawful so long as one doesn't fashion detail or shade in the image with color like the Hebrew alphabet. All right. Thank you, Zach. No. Now, we're going to some general questions about unlawful images. What about children's books? Now, knowing what is lawful and unlawful, children's books with images are no transgression to use. So long as we do not shade or color in, or you know how there's some books where they, it's kind of like they use letters and you connect the lines 
or the numbers. Yeah, when you collect right. the lines, you end up detailing the image of the creature. So long as we don't do that either. So long as we don't detail, shade in, or color in any of the outlines of creatures in respect to the law, we can use the book. The book can be used to teach children as is necessary while being mindful of the law. Now, children's toys that aren't images of creatures are seemly. They're good to use. If schoolwork for young children require them to shade in images, just have them trace the outline of the image to keep the law and complete the work without transgressing by shading in to complete the image or drawing lines to detail the image. Okay. Drawing lines within the image to detail it. Sorry. Watch out for those images that require you to connect the dots because it's unknowingly completing an unlawful image. Now, toys. There are peg dolls that do not resemble people that can be used, for example, or toys that are robot machines, toys that do not resemble man or beast. Be mindful of the images of man or creatures as we know the spirits that dwell in them. And the figures of men are tools in witchcraft according to scripture as diviners use wax dolls in their witchcrafts as well. Can you read Jasher 61 verse 8 to 10, please? And amongst the servants of Angeas was a youth of 15 years old. Balaam, son of Beor was his name. And the youth was very wise and understood the art of witchcraft. And then Jesus said to Balaam, conjure for us, I pray thee, with the witchcraft, that we may know who will prevail in this battle to which we are now proceeding. And Balaam ordered that they should bring him wax, and he made thereof the likeness of chariots and horsemen representing the army of Angeas and the army of Egypt. And he put them in the cunning prepared waters that he had for that purpose, and he took in his hand the bows of myrtle trees and he exercised his cunning and he joined them over the water and there appeared unto him in the water the images resembling the host of Angeas falling before the images resembling the Egyptians and the sons of Jacob knowing that there are spirits in these graven images and they are used for witchcraft and given these things unto our children for toys is not well, seeing as though these spirits cleave to the innocent hearts. Hence you find children attached to their toys or teddy bears or objects of love like blankets and etc. because of the spirits in the images. All right. Now, anything else on that, Zachwa? No. That's it. Okay. What about emojis? Emojis that aren't fashioned in detail to resemble persons or creatures are lawful to use. Okay. What about books? Now, sadly, the unbelievers have sought to paint their images in the holy books before. Can you read 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48, please? And laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint their likeness of their images. They wanted to put pictures of their images in the holy books. So you can see it's of the heathen to put their pictures in books. Hence, we find books with people's pictures so prominent today. Knowing the law, and it was not permitted to paint our images, the Jews were concerned of what to do with the books of the law that now had people's likenesses in them. Can you read? Verse 50, please. Then cried they with a loud voice toward heaven, saying, What shall we do with these, and whither shall we carry them away? The people were concerned, knowing these pictures of people are unclean simulacra. Yet the people understood they still needed the information in the books, so we couldn't throw the books away just because someone put the image in there. Even so today, we retain books, though there are unlawful images in them. Okay. Now, what about our government documents, passports, license, and so forth? Can you read Luke chapter 20, verse 24 and 25, please? Show me a penny. Whose image and superscription hath it? 
They answered and said, Caesar's. That's money with a person's image, just like money is today. Okay, continue, please. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto Elohim the things which be Elohim's. Though money has unlawful images, we still use it as a believer for its purposes, while we focus on keeping the law and bringing forth the fruits of the Spirit, being humble and peaceful unto Allah, I am rendering him back his spirit pure that belongs to him. As for Caesar, we keep our ID, money, work badges, and etc. because they belong to Caesar, and we must render unto him what's his, being under servitude to the nations, or else we wouldn't be able to have money to survive. The Lord has given us grace in our captivities to keep the things needful for our well-being. In regards to making pictures, it's unseemly to do if we aren't doing it for government, work, school, mandated purposes. For government or work or school mandated purposes. For example, one would have to take a picture for a work ID, but one wouldn't take a picture because one may want to show someone on Facebook a new haircut. Rather, one can make a live video to avoid offense as videos are live visuals, not dead likenesses like portraits. Okay. Now, can we have family pictures in our homes? It was also a practice of unbelievers to make likenesses or pictures of their loved ones on their walls, as is common for folks to have family pictures around the house today. Can you read Jasher chapter 80, verse 45, please? Also the likenesses of the firstborn of Egypt that were carved in their walls of their houses were destroyed and fell to the ground. Those pictures also can be objects of love. And Allah destroyed the image and the spirits that dwell in them as he was judging the Allah of the Egyptians too. Can you read Exodus 12 and 12, please? For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the Alahayans of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Ahia. Now, if you check back in the book of Jasher, Alahayim literally did what he said. The firstborn, all the firstborn died, and the firstborn in their graves were dug up, their bones were dug up, and also... He said he was executing judgment against the Alahayims. As you see, the pictures, the images knocked down off the walls as well because he destroyed those spirits there. Thus, we know that this is something we ought not to do because Ahaya commanded us not to do after the doings of Egypt. Can you read Leviticus 18, verse 2 and 3, please? Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am Ahaya, your Alahayim. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein you dwelt, you shall not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. So we see it was their doings to have pictures of their loved ones in their homes that we shall not do. Knowing his commands that portraits of people are unlawful and it's a custom of Egypt to have family portraits and the Canaanites to have pictures it is unlawful for a believer to do after the manner of these nations by having pictures of our loved ones in our home. You may have them in your phone, things like that. This is the manner of the nations, All right? Now, unlawful imagery in our homes. Now, having the books of unlawful images in our homes is not a sin as we have the books for necessary uses. We also have to buy groceries and appliances with unlawful images, yet we haven't sinned by buying what we need. Just for righteousness sake, if there's an option that omits the use of an unlawful image, by all means, use that option. On the other hand, we do have to be sure not to bring any items dedicated unto idols into our homes, lest we be accursed like it. Can you read Deuteronomy? Chapter 7, verse 25 to 26, please. The graven images of their Elohim shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. 
for it is an abomination unto Ahia the Elohim. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Right. So the graven images of the Elohims and the gold of the silver, these things are cursed. We shouldn't bring them into our home. So devoted things to idols shouldn't be brought into our homes. Achor and his family died for having the accursed things in their homes. For an example, in Joshua chapter 7. Can you read Joshua 7, verse 20 and 21, please? And Achon answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against Ahiah Elohim of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them, and I took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So you can have an example to see what Allah commanded us for our good. Now, imagery on our clothing. With our clothes, it's a heathen practice to put unlawful images on our clothing. Can you read Jasher 74 and 14, please? And the king Azrubal had a very beautiful daughter whose name was Ushpizina. And all the men of Africa embroidered her likeness on their garments on account of her great beauty and comely appearance. Now, we know an idol is nothing and the unlawful images on clothing is nothing. So having an image on a clothing tag, for example, can just be cut off for conscience sake. We will not wear clothing with images of creatures on our outer garments like the heathen, lest we set a stumbling block to an unbeliever. For work-related purposes, we would have to wear whatever uniform the company requires, as we are under the hand of the Caesar, unless it is immodest or inappropriate for a person of the Christian faith. In our personal clothing, we wouldn't wear clothing with unclean simulacra, on the outer part of the garments, like the heathen, as we aren't to follow their customs. As you may be aware of in Jeremiah chapter 10, he said, learn not the ways of the heathen and such. Anything else on that, Zachman? Yeah, um, six-pointed and five-pointed stars. Um, six-pointed star, it's actually, this is a star of an uh, idol in the New Testament. And the five-pointed star is actually a star that's used to um, to summon demons. So by all means, to stay away from those on your clothing and in your house. That's why they put the five-pointed star on top of the the um, the Christmas tree, because it's it's a it's a it's a device used to summon, or it's like it's like a gateway for demons. And that's what they use when they're doing their their um their rituals. They'll put the five pointed star on the floor and the candles to summon demons. So be mindful of those two those two things, whether on your clothing or in your house or whatever the case is. All right. The six pointed star is from Acts seven and forty three. That's a star of the deity named Rimfan. Okay. And you are familiar with the five point star if you've seen any horror movies and such. They're pretty, they show that that stuff is used, dolls as well. Right. So the Chucky movies they, and things right. like that. They use it for conjuring. Yeah. <clears throat> That's why they put it on a lot of our clothing and our children's clothing. Before you know it, your child is learning behavior that you've never seen before is because you you literally place that upon them for a demon to have that gateway to go through. So it's, it's you got to be careful, very careful of their witchcraft. Thank you. Now, touching on videos. John, if you recall from the prior lessons, John referred to the picture made of him. Speaking of John the Apostle, he referred to a picture made of him as a dead likeness of the dead. 
Videos are not dead likenesses or pictures according to scripture. They are live and in real time when we see the actual beings, not a likeness or similitude, since the person or creature is breathing, speaking, and etc., unlike and unlawful images, dead likeness. So it's not against the law to make videos of actual creatures or people. Can you read Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 4 and 5, please? But neither did the mischievous invention of men deceive us, no an image spotted with diverse colors, the painter's fruitless labor. The sight whereof enticeth fools to lust after it, and so they desire the form of a dead image that hath no breath. Notice, an image or picture is a dead image that has no breath, just as John referred to it as the dead likeness of the dead. Yet a video is in real time of a living creature, hence it's lawful. Live videos of living creatures are not unlawful images, according to the definitions of likeness and pictures in the Hebrew language in the law. Can you read Exodus 20 verse 4, please? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. We're looking at the definition of likeness. It's H8544. It's form, image, likeness, representation, semblance, or something portioned that is fashioned out as a shape that is indefinitely phantom or specifically embodiment or figuratively manifestation. Image, likeness, similitude. Notice these are representations. Phantom is not the actual person living and breathing. And thus, videos are us alive and not similitudes without breath. Okay? Now, concerning the second commandment, the law says don't make graven images or the likenesses of any living thing like people, creatures, birds, or fish. We have been commanded not to make the likeness of any living thing. A video is a moving visual image in real time, not a graven image, nor the likeness of a living creature, but the actual live visuals of the living creature in motion, which can see, hear, speak, and is breathing in the live video, all of which ensure us, according to the law, that videos are not graven images or the likenesses of living creatures, because they are the live visuals of the living creatures themselves, not a similitude, phantom or semblance but the real actual living creature so the law does not forbid us from making videos now the law forbids us from making likenesses of living creatures on surfaces in pictures paintings statues walls and etc or even within videos for that matter but it does not forbid us from doing live videos since it's not the likeness of us because it is actually us live, breathing, speaking, and hearing unlike a graven image or picture which can't speak, hear, or breathe. Also, a video is not a motion picture like the old days because there's not a series of pictures rolling together to make the effect of motion. Contrawise, we literally are in motion which makes our lessons videos, not motion pictures or images like the old days of movies. It's not a transgression of the law to make a video so long as no pictures of living creatures or graven images are within the video. It is unlawful to make videos of unlawful images because we'd be using unlawful images. Okay. Now, understanding cartoons, anime, and CGI films. Cartoons, animation, and CGI films are transgression of the law to make when they contain the likenesses of living creatures. The process that is required to make these types of movies cause transgressions of the law when they contain likenesses of living creatures because the creators are drawing or making frame-by-frame -frame images to give the illusion of live motion, when in truth, frame-by-frame -frame pictures of creatures are dead likenesses, which are commanded not to be made. Can you read Deuteronomy 4 and 23, please? 
Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of a higher Yahweh, which he made with you, and make you a graven image, or the likeness of anything which a higher Yahweh has forbidden thee. The creators of cartoons have to draw the likenesses of the creatures, while the creators of anime mostly draw images frame by frame, and the creators of CGI films have to literally make the 3D likenesses of the creatures to animate them all of which are transgressions of the law. When one creates a likeness of a creature or similitude of the figure of a male or female, there is an evil spirit that causes one to do it, as we read in Jubilees 11 and 3. And when the image is created, an evil spirit is hidden in the image, as we read in Acts of Thomas 77. And that spirit dwells there, as we learned about in Apocalypse of Peter chapter 6. These drawings, pictures, and or 3D images have evil spirits that enter into them and seek to attach themselves to those who watch the films. Hence, children and adults can get attached to watching these films or start behaving like the characters because of the spirit's influence on the viewer. It's not a sin to see a CGI film, anime, or cartoon. But one ought to teach one's children that they aren't lawful to make, and one must be mindful of the spiritual attack that it can bring upon oneself or young children who are easily influenced. As parents, one should watch the film with the child to use it as a teaching opportunity to help the child understand right from wrong, as there are some good messages within films that can be used as a teaching tool and unseen behavior that can be used to help children understand what they ought not to do as well. Anything else on that, Zach? Uh, everything was correct. As far as this point, um, I know that technology is coming out, that people are going to start being able to do cartoons with live videos, the effects. You can literally record and it, automatically takes what you're recording the people in the in the environment and it makes it cartoonish but until that gets finished it's still going to be a transgression to make yeah, thank you for the notification no oh. now social media social media is not against the law nor is keeping up with loved ones we just have to be mindful not to make pictures of ourselves to avoid the offense to the lord Making videos as a means of providing visuals for loved ones without offense to Allah Hayyam. We also have to be mindful of lust and after images of people in the world and on social media. Okay. All right. So for help for understanding how we can be enticed to lust after the, the images that we see. Just like on social media, this practice of images enticing us is an old thing. Um... As you can see, the sight of pictures of people have led the unwise to lust after it, design the forms of the dead images, and it's common of old time for folks to desire enticing images of people, just like folks covet after images on social media platforms today. Can we read Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 13 to 16, please? Then I saw that she was defiled, that they looked both one way. And that she increased her whoredoms. For when she saw men portrayed upon the wall, the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion, girded with girdles upon their loins, exceeding in dyed attire upon their heads, all of them princes to look to, after the manner of the Babylonians of Chaldea, the land of their nativity. And as soon as she saw them with her eyes, she doted upon them and sent messengers unto them in Chaldea. This is like, this is really like social media. She it saw, is. she saw <laughs> the images and was enticed and then she messaged them. Just like on social media where people see an enticing image and start writing to the person or making a comment to them. Yeah. So you can see this stuff is nothing new and see how pictures had the same effect of old as they do today to cause people to lust after them. Can you read Wisdom of Solomon 15 and 6, please? Both they that make them, and they that desire them, and they that worship them, are lovers of evil things, 
and are worthy to have such things to trust upon. So, image makers, those that desire the images that are made, and those that worship the images are all lovers of evil things. We have to be mindful not to be enticed to lust after the images on social media, nor make images to be a stumbling block to others on social media, lest we be lovers of evil things. The certification on the images and the laws and such is essential for us in these times to come to protect us. Can you read 2 Baruch chapter 32 and 1 and then 46 verse 5 and 6 please. 2 Baruch chapter 32 verse 1. But as for you, if you prepare your hearts so as to sow in them the fruits of the law, it shall protect you in that time in which the mighty one is to shake the whole creation. Second Baruch chapter 46 verse 5. But only prepare ye your hearts that ye may obey the law and be subject to those who are in fear are wise and understanding. And prepare your souls that ye may not depart from them. For if you do these things, good tidings shall come unto you, which I before told you of nor shall you fall into torment of which I testified to you before. Amen. So Amen. we prepare our hearts to obey the law and be subject to those who in fear are wise and understanding and prepare ourselves not to depart from those people. We'll be protected from the things to come. All right. Hope oh, this was edifying. Thank you all for joining us for the HRC Law class. Look forward to spending time with you again. Anything else, Brother Zachwa? Hold on. We got a comment in the chat if you want to look at it. Okay. Um, one comment said, what is the six-pointed star used for? Um, the six-pointed star is a symbol of a deity. It's the worship of, of a specific deity. Whereas the five pointed star is a conjuring tool, which they both conjure. Both stars conjure, but one is specifically for a deity and one is for demons entirely, or whatever demon that they're trying to summon. Um, you see the other one, Casa? Yes. Can you speak about dwelling in wisdom with unbelievers that have graven images? And from what I know in the precepts, there was a man in the book of Acts of Peter. He had an important rank in the city, but he was a believer. And he had fallen away and Peter came to renew him in the faith. And one of the graven images that belonged to Caesar had gotten broken. And Allah had mercy because of that image would have stayed broken. Everybody would have been in trouble. And Allah restored the image for the sake of respecting people's things. Just as renders Caesar what belongs to Caesar, if you're with someone that has graven images, that's their graven images. It's not yours. We have to focus on keeping the law ourselves, respect their things, just as we would want our things respected. Okay? All right. And we have an example that even with Abraham, when Abraham went and, went and broke all Terah's um, graven images, they were ready to kill Abraham. And he had to go running, you know. But instead, you know, it was a good example for us, even seeing the example in with the Acts of Peter. Yeah. Right. Even seeing that example that, hey, that's their graven images. That was his property. You know, we don't have any right to destroy any man's property. If a man is converted and they choose to destroy their own property, then praise Allah, you know, so. In that situation, Abraham, remember the, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> that was, Allah knew what he was doing in that time. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that, it was a different time, Yeah, you know, but for us, just using that as an example, 
don't go off and just start tearing people's stuff <laughs> Right. <laughs> be at peace with all that. If Allah tells you to break all those graven yeah. images, like he would tell us, like in certain cities that we will overtake or whatever the case is, to go and destroy all their images and whatever the case is, obey the voice of Allah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting in the coming to repentance, we, um, I'm going to get there, Isaiah. Your graven images in Isaiah 30 and 22 it talks about how we are coming to repentance and it's interesting in this discussion he's, he didn't say we would just mess up other people's images it says in Isaiah 30 and 21 and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left so Yache correcting us pointing us on a straight path Ye shall defile also the covering of your images of silver mm -hmm. and the ornament mm -hmm. of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, get thee hence. So we'll be getting rid of our own idols, whether it be literal statues, pictures, our own works. But we're going to respect other people's things because that's theirs, right? <laughs> That's helpful. You got anything else, Cosmo? No. All right. Thank you all for spending this time with us. Hope you all enjoy your day. And we'll catch you all on the next one. Peace be with you all. Ciao. Peace be with you all. Make sure you all go and uh, check out the website, www.hebrewreaders.com. Tell them. HRC, HRC, HRC. HRC, HRC, HRC. Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, church. <laughs>